Well, hello, friends, and welcome to From the Ground Up. In today's episode, we're starting the first of a four-part series focused on the Bible and what it means for Christianity. So what is the Bible? Well, to help us start getting at that question, I want to bring in my co-host, Dr. Debbie. Hello, I know that I get a lot of questions from my students about the Bible and how hard it can be to understand it. So what what is the Bible? The Bible is a collection of writings in history that shares God's redemptive story to humanity. It's not a magic book. It's not a science book either, but it is God's redemptive story, redemptive history. And I think having that in understanding to begin with is important as we start on this journey. Yeah, Debbie, that's an excellent point, because I think there's so many misconceptions about the Bible, both inside and outside the church. And so remembering that we're dealing with a redemptive historical document is a good starting point. So let's talk a little bit about content. When we talk about the Bible, we're talking about 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Now, if you come from a Catholic or Orthodox Christian tradition, there might be a few additional books in your Old Testament, but in this series, we're focusing on the 66 that form the bedrock of all branches of Christianity. Starting in the Old Testament, there are 39 books. First, we have the Pentateuch. They're the first five books in the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. This story starts at the beginning with creation, and it moves up in time to the people of Israel having been freed from captivity in the land of Egypt. And then it moves us toward them getting ready to enter the land of Canaan. Picking up from there, we have what are called the historical books. These books run from the book of Joshua up through the book of Esther. They cover the time of history of Israel entering the land of Canaan, through their formation as a nation, through their eventual destruction at the hands of the Assyrians and Babylonians, and eventually they're re-entering the land. These historical books cover the rest of the chronological history of the Old Testament, and by the time you reach Esther, you've reached that chronological end, even though there are additional books still in the Old Testament. Yeah, the last two sections of the Old Testament are chronologically interspersed within that timeline. So we have the wisdom books, which are Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Songs. And these books focus more on philosophy, poetry, and answering the big questions of life. What is meaning? What is purpose? How do I find value in life? And where is God in the midst of tragedy? Our final collection of books in the Old Testament are the Prophets. These are the stories of the people that God uses to call his people back into right relationship with him. Through visions, oracles, and sometimes miraculous acts, these people show a God who is pursuing his people even as they start walking away from him. The beauty of these books is that it shows that God can use fallen sinners to still accomplish his purposes and that he pursues people even amidst a walking away from him. And then the New Testament takes over with a person by the name of Jesus of Nazareth. The New Testament starts off with the four Gospels. That is the story of Jesus and his earthly ministry. These four accounts are told from different perspectives, and they help us to get the more complete picture of what happened during his life. And a little bit after his life, his resurrection, up to his ascension. After the Gospels, we have the Acts of the Apostles, which is a history of the early church. Um, We call it, sometimes we call it the Acts of the Holy Spirit, because really that's the beginning of the church. And we see what the Holy Spirit did through fallen people, as Brian mentioned. And we see what he did again and again um, to bring his redemptive story into um, our world. After these books, we have what are called the Epistles. The epistles are letters written by various leaders of the early church to various churches throughout the Roman Empire. These letters come from a variety of leaders like Paul, Peter, John, Jude, James, and the unknown or anonymous writer of the book of Hebrews. These letters address the issues the early church was working through, maybe much like we are working through issues today. The last book of the New Testament is the book of Revelation. This is an apocalyptic look at the end of time, a culmination of that redemptive historical story where we see God finally righting all wrongs and ushering in the new heavens and new earth. The book not only gives us a foretaste of the end of the story, but also communicates to us how we can live in a broken world with hope for the future. 
It reminds us and calls us back to our first love, Christ. Awesome. In part two of this series, we're going to talk about inspiration and reliability and what do Christians mean when we as Christians use those terms. We hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. See you next time.